Gracious God, our Father, thank you now for the privilege of hearing your word. We pray that you would meet us in the text, tell of the truth we're teaching, that every hearer's heart might hear and receive, believe, practice, and reap the benefits thereof. We give you all praise, glory, and honor. In the name of Jesus, we pray, and the people of God said, Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Let me ask you, since this is Youth Day and I was searching the scriptures uh, and then finally uh, the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me uh, uh, concerning our young people, young people and young at heart, um, whether you are a young, very young person or whether you're young at heart like Abraham was at 75 years when he started his journey with the Lord. And uh, God took him to great success. So it really doesn't matter how old you are or how young you are. What matters most is if you understand the principles of God's word and practice them, then you will profit from them. And so uh, I wanted to encourage our young people and young at heart today uh, about seven observations of a blessed person. Seven observations of a blessed person. You know what's interesting about it? Many of us read the Bible, but we never see the principles that are laid many times right before our eyes. We read it and we say we know it and we think we know it, but we really don't know it because uh, we just look at it and don't listen to it. And so I'm hopeful today that uh, we learn a lesson from, uh, would you be interested if a man came here just like Brother Brandon did today and shared with us what he did? A man who had uh, been a janitor of this major worldwide corporation and rose to CEO. Would you be interested in his story? Well, let me change it up a little bit since we're in church. Would you be Would you be interested in a story of a man who was a lowly shepherd who rose to be a king? Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, it, it's all the same thing, same thing. Now, nothing is more important than understanding the word and or the writer and the writer here is being used to actually tell a part of his story this story comes from David it's the very first psalm many of us know it many of us know it there is a contrast between uh, a good man and a bad man there are the principles of what a good man does and do not do and what a bad man does or do not do. And so the contrast is interesting to see because all you have to do is see what you do or do not do and it'll determine whether you are good or bad or blessed or cursed. I mean, it's clear. So look at Psalm number one. I just want to look at the first three verses because I don't believe many of you on this message in the time that I have uh, really want to deal with the uh, the attributes, if you will, and can call them that, of the bad man that's found in the fourth, fifth, and sixth verse, which talks about, you know, the wicked is foul, the wicked is fruitless, uh, 
the wicked has folly, folly, and the rich, the wicked uh, is uh, finished in his work because he is a failure. Now, we, we'll deal with that another time in the fourth, fifth, and sixth verse, but I want to deal with the seven observations of a blessed person. Uh, Psalm 1 through 3 reads, and you have it there, begin reading now. God bless you. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Seven observations of a blessed person. The Bible says, blessed or blessed is the man, woman, girl, boy, person. Blessed is the person that does not. It starts off like this because one of the things God wants us to know through this writer, David himself, is that he had to deal with the things that most of us do rather than the things that most of us don't do. Most of us who are not blessed of the Lord walk in the counsel of the ungodly. Now, the ungodly are people who are people without God in their lives, without the benefit of salvation, without the benefit of the knowledge of God, without the benefit of the leadership of God, without the benefit of the inspiration of God, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And why would you want to take information, inspiration, or direction, or instruction from somebody who's not connected with God? And yet so many times we do it with people on Facebook we don't know. We, we do it with people on television, commercials, movies, uh, songs, you know, artists, on and on and on. All of these people who are not connected with God and we find ourselves accepting the information that they give us that is not godly. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so when we walk in the counsel of the ungodly, then obviously the direction that we're going is opposite of God. Secondly, stand in the way of sinners. Now, listen, you've got one walking and the other standing in the way of sinners, meaning having his involvement with sinners. People will tell you, well, they do it, but I don't do it, and I've shared with you before. Assim association brings on assimilation. If you continue to hang out with folk, stuff that they have falls on you. And whoever is the greatest influencer will fall on the other. All you have to do to get wet is stand in the rain. And many times, even with an umbrella and even with a raincoat and uh, boots and all that stuff, you still get wet because the wind can blow the rain in directions that keep it from falling straight down. And you still become wet. Why? Because you are standing in that place where rain falls. And then thirdly, it talks about or sitting in the seat of the scornful. <clears throat> Now, of course, scornful are always people who have negative things to say, people who are always talking down something good, talking down people. Child, I wouldn't do that if I were you. They always want this. They want to do that. Blah, 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 blah. Sitting in the seat of the scornful. Now, you may not have even made up your mind, but their negativity rubs off on you. But it also says that when you are small-minded, you are impacted by 
the small-minded. In other words, small minds hang out together. They, 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 they're not a threat to one another. And so a lot of times when one does not want to do something and they fear you might want to do it, they start bringing forth, spewing that negativity that persuades you not to do so. But listen to me, my brothers and sisters. This first part deals with principles uh, of a good man who does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly, stand in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. That's what he does not do. Now, look at what a blessed man does. In verse 2, but he is what? His delight or his desire is in the law of the Lord. Now, the word law here literally means the Torah or the Pentateuch or the five books of Moses, uh, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Those are considered the books of the law. Now, David at this time did not have the benefit of, of the entire Bible like we do. But his desire was to know the law of the Lord. The law of the Lord. The law of the Lord. But his delight, listen, is in the law of the Lord. Now, that's, that's, that's his desire to know the law of the Lord. And he meditate day and night. Now, not only is his desire to know the law of the Lord, but he's determined to learn the law of the Lord. Right, to learn the law. Day and night. If that's not determination, tell me what is. You know, anything you really want to know, you spend time with it. You research it. You dig into it. You familiarize yourself with it. You give it a part of your attention uh, that allows it to be absorbed in you so that you will know those things and they will come and flow out of you the more acquainted with those things that you are. So he was determined to learn the law. But there's another reason why he desires to know the law, know the law of the Lord, and he's determined to learn the law of the Lord. It's because, thirdly, he wants the details to live the law of the Lord. Details to live the law of the Lord. In other words, he was the one who says, thy word have I hid in my so that I, I might not sin against God, against thee. That's why he's the one that made clear uh, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. See, my brothers and sisters, when you know the word, the word can direct you. It can direct you in the moment. That's the feet. That's the lamp that lets you see what your next step is. But the path is your potential and your future that allows you to look down the road and see better up ahead and press toward it. So, I need you to see the verse one talks about the fitness of a blessed person. The fitness, the fitness. I'm not talking about physical fitness. It's wonderful to be in physical shape and all of those good things, but it's talking about the fitness of the spiritual man. Spiritual man, fitness. But then verse two talks about the faithfulness of a blessed man or woman or person. The faithfulness. The faithfulness is 
He desires to know the law of the Lord. He's determined to learn the law of the Lord. And thirdly, he wants the details to live the law of the Lord. Are y'all with me this morning? And he's faithful to those things because it's those things that are called principles that's going to lead him to the place he's trying to go. Now, many of us love verse 3. Verse 3 is loaded here. There are five observances in verse 3 that I want to lift out for you. Many of us have read it many times. I've preached it many times. And every time I go into it, God gives me something more, something different, something richer. And so I wanted to share that with you this morning, especially our young people. Listen, verse 3 now. And, and. Now, of course, that conjunction ties verse 3 with verse 2. Just like uh, but is a contrast between verses 2 and verse 1. In other words, uh, the bad man is in verse 1, the good man is in verse 2. Now, from verse 2, it continues on saying, and connected to the good man. Are you with me? And he shall be like a tree planted, planted. And he shall be like a tree planted. The idea here is really transplanted because it is taken from wherever, perhaps a nursery, etc., and then placed by the rivers of water. It is, here it is, it is fixed in a place. Third observation, it's fixed. It's fixed. Planted means fixed. See, my brothers and sisters, uh, the old folk used to say, uh, rolling stone gathers no moss. In other words, uh, my grandmother put it this way, uh, if you keep running, you're going to run past more than you catch up with. You've got to learn how to settle down where it is most conducive for you to be blessed and to be able to discover that there are things why God has fixed you in a certain place at a certain period for a certain purpose. Listen, there are many things we desire to do, we want to do, we'd like to be, we'd like to become, but is it what God wants for us? Is it what God created for us? Listen to me, young people. You know, if you don't know your purpose, then you'll have problems with where God has planted you. Where he has, I don't know why the Lord put me here. I don't know why, you know. Well, he put you there because there are some reasons that God had for placing you there for your benefit or for your good and for his glory. Now, if the tree is planted, guess what it suggests? It didn't get there by itself. Are you listening to me? Which means when you are a person, Abraham is the father of faith. He was in Haran. He was already 75 years old. He was in his pagan land. He was among his pagan family. He had his pagan friends. He lived his pagan life until he met God. And God told him, leave your country, leave your family, leave your friends, leave your home, and go where I tell you to. What was God telling him? I'm going to transplant you somewhere else. He had the promised land for him that was far better than the land he knew. And so God placed him there. You got to know, my brothers and sisters, that when God moves you, he moves you to bless you, to benefit you, 
and to put you where he wants you to be. You might not like where it is, but I promise you, if you just stay and do what you're supposed to do, you'll see why God put you there. So fixed, point three, observation three, fixed. And he shall be like a tree fixed, planted. Here it is, by the rivers of water. Why is he planting the tree by the rivers of water? Because he wants them to, or it to be fruitful. Fruitful. Somebody say fruitful. That's the fourth point, fruitful. God plants the tree by the river of water. And I've shared with this, you with this before, if you got your notes, if you remember this, by multiple streams of water. Multiple streams of water. Why? What does it suggest to us? It suggests that God has given us multiple resources for us to be fruitful. Multiple, not just one resource, but multiple resources. So if one resource at this moment dries up, you got several more that you can draw from. And listen, the man that has more resources has more of a possibility of being successful than the man that only has one resource. Now, God is all of our sources, but we're talking about resources now. So God plants the tree by the rivers, four different rivers of water. Now, what's the likelihood of all four of them drying up at one time? Very unlikely, very unlikely. But here's another thing I need you to understand, that the root system of the tree planted by the rivers of water taps in to all four rivers. Let's just say, let's just say the tree is planted by the rivers, but that river might be like an island kind of thing. But on each side of the island, there's a different river flowing. The root system reaches out in all directions and runs down to the resources, the river. There's a reason it's going to do that. Keep this in mind as we progress through the text. By the rivers of water that bring it forth his fruit in his season. Now it's not just talking about uh, being fruitful. Now it's talking about flourishing. Somebody say flourishing. Listen, uh, uh, when you flourish, you have more than enough. When you flourish, that is a place that everyone who desires to be successful, desires to be blessed, desires to be prosperous, want to be where they are flourishing. How many of you know that just living from paycheck to paycheck won't cut it? Can, can I give you an idea of, of, of a world, a perspective of flourishing from a successful person? It's having more than enough, more than you need for this moment. Amen. It means a blessed abundance. It means if the market turned over today or tomorrow, you're diversified. You've got other investments. If real estate slow up or slow down, what you decide to do is, since the market has gone down, I'm going to buy when the market is low, and I'm going to sell when the market comes back. I, I, I mean, when you begin to flourish, you have more than one area of income, one or more than one area of investments. You flourish everywhere you turn. You're being blessed. 
Y'all remember the song, every time I turn around, he's blessing me. Anybody know that experience? Even if it's temporary, have you ever experienced that? Every time we turn around, he blessing us. Something like, uh, no, no, I never had that experience yet. Well, I'm trying to help you to have that experience. Listen, so he flourishes, flourishes. He's more than just a few apples on a tree. He's loaded branches away down because he's got so much fruit. Flourishing, flourishing. Notice the next point. It says his leaf, six, this is the sixth observation. His leaf also shall not wither. His leaf shall all his leaf uh, shall not also wither. Uh, here's why: because it is flowing and it has follow through. In other words, here's what the tree that's planted by the river of resources has: it has so many resources that it doesn't it doesn't dry up when heat comes. 17th chapter of Jeremiah tells you that it don't even notice when the heat comes. Where other trees might dry up because the land is dry, parched, and cracked, that tree don't even pay attention to the dryness. It's not even bothered by the heat. It's not even worried about what's going on. Storm comes, winds blow, rains blow. It is secured. It is secured. And therefore, its leaves stay green. Listen, even when it's not his season. How many times, my brothers and sisters, have you gone through folk, gone through things and folk couldn't tell it? And when you start telling them what you've been through and you don't look like what you've been through, they wonder what's wrong with you. But, 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 but you've got a flowing element whereby the resources keep on replenishing you that even though you're going through everything every other tree is going through, it just don't show on you because you've got resources that constantly replenish you. It replenishes you. And then the seventh one is, listen, and whatsoever. Now he transitions back from a tree to a man. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. And you know what that is? That's favor. <laughs> That's favor. It's favor because he's a blessed man. He's fit. He's faithful. He's fixed. He's fruitful. He flourishes and he flows. And so now he has favor, favor. And whatsoever, now you know you got to have favor to have whatsoever. God is not limiting you. Listen, you can do whatsoever. But, but, but lest you miss miss the true reality of whatsoever here. Whatsoever, and, it, and this is important, because there are three points here that I need you to see. In the whatsoever, it has to do with purpose, potential, and prosperity. Whatsoever, listen at this so you'll understand it. I'll make it simple, clear, plain. 
and whatsoever he doeth, whatever he doeth must be within the arena, the parameters of his purpose. Listen at me well. You remember when Paul said, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthened me? Let me ask you a question. Have you ever tried to do that? I'm, I'm just being honest with you. Have you ever tried to do something that you couldn't do and you didn't do it? It didn't work. Are y'all listening to me here? You see, it's not an open-faced principle or promise for everything. He says, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. But the all things that he refers to is found in the 12th verse, the verse that preceded him saying that. He was talking about the things he learned. He could do all the things he learned. If you hadn't learned to do those things, don't go there thinking that you can do all things. You don't make God out of a lie. You make yourself out of a lie. That's why we study the scripture to show ourselves approved under God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Listen to what he says in that 12th verse. I know. How does he know? Because he learned both how to be abased and to abound. I know, he says, how to be abased and to abound. Does anybody know, so know what else he says? I know both how to, what else? Philippians 4 and 12. Turn there. I need you to see the young people turn there. Philippians 4 and 12. He starts off, I know both how to be abased and to abound. Both. All right, listen, 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 Adam, listen, listen. All right, so Keisha, you over there with the young people. Read, read it for me, please. I know both how to be a base. both how to be a base and, and know how, how to be how. In, in everywhere and, and in all things, things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to, to abound and, and to suffer need. need. Listen. All of those things he has learned how to do. And then he says, I can do all things. What might have been helpful if he would have added the word those. I know how to do all those things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Are you listening to me this morning? You see, we make the word of God error when we take it out of context. We take the content, but we take the content out the context. And if we take the content out the context, we got a pretext. Now listen, let me, let me, let me help you understand something. There are just some communities that won't let you put a mobile home in it. And the reason they won't let you put a mobile home in it is because they have a standard by which there are certain requirements to build a home in that subdivision. And anything less than that standard will not work. And so what you got to understand is if you don't use the word of God in its context, then you can't trust that that word is going to work for you because you've taken it out of its context. If I take my battery out my car and put it in your car, your car may start, but guess what's going to happen to mine? 
it's gonna, it ain't going to sit there. It ain't going to say, mm-hmm. Mm. It ain't going to do none of that. It's not going to do nothing because I don't have life in it. So here's, again, as I'm closing on this last point, favor, 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 favor. It's important to understand, and whatsoever he doeth in the context of his purpose, that's why God planted the tree by the rivers of water because he wanted the tree to be fruitful, to flourish, and to flow. By, 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 um, I, 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 I forgot to mention in this word flow, that is, the part, that is the part where the Holy Spirit lives underneath our skin, whether he continues to replenish us, whether he continues to give us direction, whether he, where he continues to give us inspiration. We flow because even though it's not our season to grow, we need to maintain the fact that we're still alive. We're still alive. There's joy in us. There's peace in us. There are blessings upon our lives. Listen, you need to, when you get through flourishing and flowing, how many of you know you need a break? <laughs> you know, some, some, some people go on vacation to get away and to take a break. And they vacation so hard that when they come off the vacation, they need a vacation from the vacation. <laughs> No, no, a vacation is designed to relax you, rest you, to get you ready to go back and continue what you're doing. And that's when you flow, you need to know that just as much as you need to be fruitful, you also need to have rest periods. You've got to be, that's why David says, same writer. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh, maketh, maketh me to lie down in where? Green pastures. Green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He, here's why he does that. Because lamb, sheep are noted as dumb animals. They'll lead you wherever you need them to. Uh, if you knock them down, they'll stay there kicking rather than getting back up and moving on. They can be on the banks of the river and die of thirst because they don't drink from rushing, moving water. That's why if they're moving from one pasture to the other and they come down by the river, the shepherd has to take his staff and dig a trench from the river backwards up on land so that when the water rushes in, it fills the trenches with water. When that water rushes back out, the trenches are filled, but they're no longer moving. They're still waters. And the sheep will come down, and they'll drink from still waters. And so you got to know that your potential, whatsoever he do it, do it, do it, do it. You know, I don't care if you know your purpose. If you're not doing your purpose, you will not prosper. I don't care what gift you have. You have a gift of singing. You have the gift of speaking. You have the gift of doing this, doing that, doing the other. If you don't do it, you're not going to be blessed and prosper from it. So the potential for doing what you are purposed to do has much to do with you. If at first you don't succeed, try, 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 try again. Don't give up. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Just do it. And you'll discover that prosperity will find you when you do what you are purposed to do. The tree doesn't have to do anything but be right where it was planted and receive the sunlight, receive the nutrients, receive the water through the vines, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, 
All it has to do is be in its place and do what it does. And that's to be a tree and produce. And produce. My brothers and sisters, listen. You're good for a reason. God wants you to be productive. God wants you to use your potential. There are blessings. There are discoveries. There are businesses. There are pursuits that God has blessed you to know and or to learn or to seek that might be your purpose that God is expecting you to use your potential to be able to profit from, to bring prosperity to, to get what God has for you. God doesn't have any desire for lazy folk. The book of Proverbs teaches us that. Now, you just want everybody to do for you. You want everybody to give to you. You want everybody to, James Brown way back in the seminary said, I don't want nobody to give me nothing. Ha! <laughs> Open up the door. <laughs> oh, yeah, y'all remember that, don't you? Some of them old timers. Hmm? They remember, they remember they're about to break a move, yeah. But you have got to learn that if someone opens the door for you, it's your responsibility to go in and get all that you are able to get. You remember, and I'm closing again on this message, this point. You remember the woman at Kings when her husband died and she went to the prophet and the prophet said, what do you have in your house? And she said, I have a little oil and a cruise. And he told the woman, listen, go borrow some pots. Borrow not a few. Listen, go as far as you can go. Go all around your neighborhood and borrow all that you can. Now, that didn't make no sense to that woman. She had a little oil in a cruise, and the prophet told her, go borrow all these pots for what? For what? I'm here to tell you sometime, my brothers and sisters, directions, instructions that God gives may not make sense now, but what makes more sense then the direction making sense is obedience to the instruction you've been given. She obeyed. She obeyed. However, she obeyed with limitations. She might have gone down one block, maybe two blocks, in one direction. And said, this is enough, boys. This is enough. Because these were the same boys that were going to be taken away by the creditor and sold to pay the bill of her husband who had taken care of his family. And so there she goes in. The Bible tells her, shut the door. Why? Because there are some things God is telling you. He's not telling your neighbor. Don't be so quick to tell everybody what God is telling you. C can I tell you, everybody don't mean you're good. And everybody isn't happy for your success. And sometimes you need to recognize that the same people you tell your dream to will not help you get or achieve your dreams, but will try to keep you from reaching your dreams. And you say, pray for me. I, the Lord told me this, that, and the other. Now you're expecting them to P-R-A-Y. And they P-R-E-Y. Why? Because that means if you get what the Lord told you, you're going to leave them behind. 
And some folk, listen to this, don't want more. And because they don't want more, guess what? They don't want you to want more. So the woman came in, shut the door, and the oil that she had, the man of God told her, all right, now begin pouring into all the pots. And that little oil that was about this much, she began pouring. Jesus, what is going on here? When the oil should have stopped, it kept on running. And the pot filled up. She said, oh, glory. Boy, move that pot over and bring me another one. Oh, that's the way. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, and she filled up that pot. Boy, bring me another pot. Yeah. I like this. I got the right one. Oh, and then she filled up all of those pots. And guess what she said? Bring me another. Uh, Ma, we ain't got no more. Well, guess what? It was too late for her to go borrow any more. She had to use what she had. And it was a blessing because the man of God told her to do two things. Take this and sell it and do two things. Pay your bills. I, I don't want to say what I'm thinking right now when he said that. Pay your bills. Mm. Pay your bills. I don't know how you feel about it, but you ought to pay your bills. Pay your bills, listen, and live off the rest. Pay your bills first. Why? Prioritize it. If you don't pay your bills and get out there, go spending, buying, going online, doing all this, that, the other, you're going to be in the same predicament when these funds run out because you did not pay your bills. Think about this, and I'm closing. How much money would you enjoy from your paycheck if you didn't have to pay any bills? I know you don't want to sit down. I know you're like, ooh, he's stepping all on my toes. I ain't got enough to make it from one paycheck to the next paycheck. Listen. If you pay your bills and get those out the way, think about how much more you can enjoy your paycheck. Isn't it good to be able to take your paycheck, put it in the bank, put it in investments, uh, be a blessing to others, pay your tithe, give your offering, help other folk out, and have more left over when you get through doing all of this? Buy what you want, get it when you want. Don't have to worry about nobody telling you you approved. <laughs> Pay your bills and live off the rest. Live, not exist, not get by, not barely make it, but live off the rest. What a blessing. That's prosperity. That's prosperity. Amen. Young people, one more time. Seven observations. A blessed person is fit. They're faithful. They're fixed. They're fruitful. They flourish. They flow. And they have favor. And when they tap into their potential, into their purpose, and do it, do it, do it, they will be prosperous. 
give God a hand of praise. The doors of the church are open, whoever you are, my brother, my sister. Why do you study the word? Just to say I read it? Just to go through a, a fixed reading program? Or do you go through the word of God to know what it says? to learn what it says, to live what it says. Because if you're not doing it for those three reasons, then you're gonna miss the blessings God has for you. The doors of the church are open. Whoever you are, come on. This is your time. This is your time. There are some of you right now waiting on your breakthrough, waiting on your blessing waiting on your ability to get what God has for you. You've got to be faithful. Before you can be faithful, you have to be fit. You can't walk in the counsel of the ungodly. You can't stand in the way of sinners. You can't sit in the seat of the scornful. It was a progression from moving to standing to sitting. Going down, down, down. It all began with bad counsel. Be careful who you let speak in your ear. Be careful what advice you get from others. Look at their lives. Look at the fact that they are either where you want to be or they're on the road to where you're going. Don't get somebody who don't even go to church. Somebody who don't believe in the Lord. Somebody who don't practice the principles of God to give you information. Anything you want to know is in the word of God. And even if you don't know it, you have those God have placed in place to help teach you that, to give you that understanding. Is that one who will come today? Reaping the harvest God promised. Amen, amen, amen. Give the Lord a hand of praise then.